In today's test in the lab, I wanted to test out how much your part dimensions will change after they get wet when printed in nylon. You see, nylon is a very hygroscopic material, meaning it can absorb moisture easily, which is why you want to dry it while printing. But the fact it's hygroscopic is not only true to the filament on the spool, it will also be true to your printed part. This means if you're dealing with a very hygroscopic nylon, your part may actually grow slightly as it absorbs moisture from the surrounding air. We call this process moisture conditioning and it's pretty much inevitable whenever you print with a nylon material. So what I did was a couple of tests using our CoPA and our PA6CF, both of which are two very hygroscopic nylons. I printed this calibration cube XYZ and I scaled it up to 40 millimeters designed by Hectori on Maker World. First up was our CoPA, and right off the build plate, I was getting a readout for the X and Y dimension of 40.7 millimeters and 40.8 millimeters for the Z dimension. You'll notice through a lot of my tests, right off the build plate, I am slightly over extruding, so I may need to tweak my flow settings a bit. Then I threw this cube into the oven to anneal the part, which will also really dry the part out. And because of this, we saw a very slight shrinkage in the dimensions, with the X and Y dimension being 40.6 millimeters and the Z dimension being 40.7 millimeters. Then after I let the part out and let it moisture condition in a humid box for 48 hours, we saw the dimensions grow again to an X and Y dimension of 40.8 millimeters and the Z was surprisingly 40.7 millimeters. So I'm not quite sure why that didn't grow as much, but this is testing the lab, we're learning as we go. I then do the exact same test with the PA6CF, but we're limited on time here. So I'll just tell you that the exact same results happened where right off the printer, it had a certain dimension. After annealing, it shrunk. Then after moisture conditioning, it grew again to a larger print than it was right off the bill plate. Then the same is true with this tolerance test I did in both materials by 3D in plastic on Maker World. I will label everything down below, but you could see after the part became moisture conditioned, the tolerances I wasn't able to fit into as small of a hole. So you could tell the parts are growing when it gets moisture conditioned. Now there are quite a few factors that will go into how much your part grows. I mean, how much infill you have, how big the part is. And so you're gonna have to do a bit of testing on your part to find out what the best tolerances are when you print in nylon. If this is unacceptable to you and you need tight tolerances, we would suggest using a different material that is not nylon. So something such as our brand new ASA CF, which holds its dimensional stability great. This isn't to turn you off nylons or carbon fiber nylons. They're great materials with some amazing properties. You just need to know what you're getting into before you purchase. Come back next Wednesday for even more hypothesis testing with testing in the lab.